So we put the glass bubbles into plastic. Now we want to know that they're, they're safe, that they haven't broken during the processing. One method that we use to determine this is a burn-off method. So we take the plastic pellets or injection molded material, we stick it in a crucible, we put it in a kiln so that overnight we can heat this kiln up to 600 degrees C. At 600 degrees C, the plastic resin is going to burn off and volatilize and turn into gas and exit the kiln. What's left is glass bubble or any other inorganic additive. We can calculate what the theoretical density should be given the ash contains only those inorganic materials. Now we can measure the actual density of the, of the residue of the ash, compare it to the theoretical, and if they match, we know that no, no glass bubbles were broken in the process of extruding the material. If the density, the actual density is higher, then we know there's some breakage because glass in its uh, unblown uh, state, wh wh when it's not a bubble, has a higher density than it does as a bubble. So if we see breakage, we'll see a higher actual density compared to theoretical. So we would take the material out of the kiln. That material would be a white powder or an ash powder such as this. We would take this material and measure density, but we can also put it on a slide and put it into an SEM microscope, a, a scanning electron microscope, and look for bubble breakage. So let's show you that process. We've burned off the plastic resin in the kiln overnight. We've taken the residue, we've put it on a microscopic slide, and stuck it in a scanning electron microscope. And now we've got the view of the glass bubbles that were in the plastic composite. So on the monitor, you can see that the glass bubbles are mostly whole, no breakage. So this is a good plastic composite that we've made with whole glass bubbles and we're getting the full benefit of the low density additive in terms of lightweighting the material.